Hi guys, Olivia here, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Thursday, February 10th, and I'm back for my stitching update. It has been two weeks since my last one, so I hope you've all been well, and you've been stitching, and making, and creating all of the things. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. This is a video podcast where I talk about my cross-stitching and my quilting. However, if quilting is not something that you are interested in seeing or hearing, I show it a little bit later on in the video, and I let you know in plenty of time that they'll be making their appearance so that, that way you can go on to the next floss tube video if you are a returning subscriber welcome back so how have you guys all been i hope you had a great two weeks since we last sat down to chat uh today for me is thursday and i decided to film a day ahead of schedule because tomorrow is my son ethan's 16th birthday and i wanted to be able to spend the evening with him and then of course we're going to have a party for him on saturday I cannot believe he is 16. I also can't believe Allison is 20. I mean, it just seems like time has went by so very fast. And in talking with other mothers when my kids were younger, they would say why well, I am looking forward to when they grow out of like the baby phase into the toddler phase, but I was actually the opposite. I liked when they were babies. <laughs> so anyway, so we will be celebrating his birthday tomorrow. And he told me that he feels like if your birthday falls within the school year, you should be allowed to have an excused day off from school. And I also remember feeling that way when I was a kid, but I told him sadly he would have to go to school. <laughs> so over the past two weeks, I would say, I don't feel like my uh, stitching was as prolific as it usually is. I got my sewing machine back, so that's kind of eaten into some of my stitching time. I'm trying to like catch up on some of those projects that were waiting for my sewing machine to come back from the repair shop. Uh, it did come back last Wednesday and I sent it in for a cleaning and they called me and told me that the motor on my sewing machine had went out or was going out. So I had to have them replace the motor. Luckily they had it on hand and luckily it was under warranty. So. A lot of sewing has been happening and that has of course been cutting into the stitching time and also I ended up, I used to read a lot uh, before I did cross stitching. Um, I would quilt and then I, I would read like a lot and I used to devour books and then I started stitching and the stitching kind of ate into the reading time. And the other day I had to take Ethan to the dentist and so I decided to download a book onto my Kindle and before I knew it, I was reading. And so that kind of cut into the stitching time as well. I still have progress. I don't want you guys to think I don't have any progress, but I, I, I feel like I don't have as much as I would typically have. And it's just because there's been a lot of other stuff going on behind the scenes as well. But when I thought, when I was ironing all of my pieces and I was looking at them and then comparing them to the progress from the previous pictures that I had, I mean, I have made a fair bit of progress, just not as much as I think I was anticipating. <laughs> okay, so I think what I'm going to do is just dive right in and start talking about what I've been working on over the past two weeks. So we'll start with my morning stitch, which has been Samplings number 1 by Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. So I decided to leave it in my scroll frame. Um, I started out originally stitching it in my hoop, but I was finding that I was having some trouble making my eyes adjust first thing in the morning to working on 40 count. And it was a little bit uncomfortable to use my hoop while working on 40 count. I really feel like I do best when it's in a Q-snap or a scroll frame. And then of course the lighting is like right up above it. Uh, but in the morning, first thing in the morning, you know, your eyes haven't quite adjusted very, you know, you're, you know, getting up from sleep and you're making them work and it was kind of uncomfortable. So I decided to put it into my scroll frame and then um, have my lap stand and then stitch like that. And it's been a lot easier for me to stitch on it and see it. So here's my progress. <laughs> So I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count Dusty Road by Seraphim Fabrics, which is the called for linen. I'm also using the called for threads one over two. And I really love this. It is so sweet and delicate and just 
perfection for spring and Easter. I just have a little ways left to go. And I also realized that on this part right here, um, I had too many stitches. I had one too many stitches down here. I had five instead of four. So I need to go in and uh, take all of these stitches out and then fix it down here and then restitch it. And normally I probably wouldn't do that, but I feel like, you know, these two sides mirror each other and it's a little bit, you know, having it be just that one stitch off, I feel like I would really, really notice it. And there is an egg shape that you're supposed to trace on here and then cut out. And I don't know how much it would affect that. So I think I will go in and take it out and then restitch it. And then I just have a couple of little things left to stitch inside the egg and then it'll be all done. So I really have enjoyed working on this one, even though my eyes took a little bit of adjusting first thing in the morning. Uh, typically my morning stitch is usually like a, something on a 32 count. So going from a 32 count, which is what this one right here was to a 40 count was like a huge difference, especially first thing in the morning. So my plan is to continue working on that until it is finished and hopefully I will have it finished to show you guys next time. But other than that, I'm really enjoying working on it. I love the, um, I just love how delicate it is. It just, it really, it's very soft and feminine and I really like that. And I think it's gonna look great in the trench bowl when I have it finished. <laughs> Okay, so before I show you my next project that I've been working on, I need to uh, fess up a little bit because I feel like this might be coming across in my video and I don't want you to think I'm scatterbrained today, but um, this morning when I was out walking Friday, I ended up hurting my back and it's actually a little bit uncomfortable to sit here to do my video. So I've, I've deleted like a couple parts of the video just because I can't seem to concentrate very well and I need to focus. And I don't want you guys to think that, you know, there's other stuff going on or, or anything like that. And um, anyway, I just wanted to let you know that in case I appear a little bit scattered or I make a funny face, it's just, it's just because I hurt my back a little bit. So that being said, a project that I worked on over the past two weeks was Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs. I'm stitching this with Yvette and Yvette divided the sampler up into seven sections or seven assignments and each month we have a section that we will need to stitch and finish before the end of the month in order for us to finish by the end of July and I was able to work on the February assignment and I did get that part done. I also did work a little bit ahead but here is my progress. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count Dusty Road by Seraphim Fabrics with the Vicki Clayton Silks Conversion that you can find on Vicki Clayton's website. And I'm absolutely loving the colors one over two. <laughs> so these colors definitely read kind of a vintage Christmas. And I really, really like that. It's it just, the sampler itself seems so unique. And I just really, I really enjoy working on this one a lot. I also really enjoy working with the Vicki Clayton silks. Um, this whole time working on this entire section here, I did not have one knot, no thread, you know, like fraying, or um, if you have to rip something out, you know how sometimes it can weaken the piece of thread and then as you're stitching before you know it, the thread just sort of like comes apart. Um, haven't had any of that problem. If I do have to rip out something, it just comes right out, no problem. So I am definitely a huge fan of her silks. So as many of you know, I am stitching this sampler in memory of my sister-in-law who passed away in November. And I've been thinking about how I want to um, personalize this. So the first thing that I decided to do is there are some motifs right here that they don't show up very well. And I decided to rip them out and I'm going to put her maiden name, which is Gust. I'm gonna put it here. And then below this um, uh, 
middle motif on the top section. On the bottom, I'll show it, or underneath it, and I will show you a picture. So right here, there are a group of motifs, and I am going to put her name here, and I'll see um, how much room is underneath, but somewhere in there, uh, Brian wanted me to put her um, date of birth and then her date of death. Um, I also will put the initials of her parents, her husband, her three brothers, the first initial of her three brothers, and then the first initial of her two kids. So I'll put that somewhere in the sampler here. And then as many of you know, um, the last conversation that I had with her, uh, she asked me if I stitched anything other than houses. And of course we laughed. And a lot of you guys felt like I should find a way to put a house motif in it. And I am planning on doing that. I haven't decided exactly where it's going to go, but it will go somewhere. I might have to move a motif out of the way or eliminate it altogether, but some somehow I will find a way to put a small house. And I was thinking that the house that I stitched in our lasting friendship would be perfect because it's only about an inch, like an inch by like an inch and a quarter. So I think it would be the perfect one. I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, there being way too many colors. I think I might just be able to get away with finding two of the colors within these colors to stitch the house. So somewhere down the road, you will see that pop up. And I haven't quite decided yet um, about personalizing it. I might wait a little while, at least until I get that top section done. And then uh, once I have her name down below, then I will kind of know where to place the different initials and, and things like that. So. It's a wonderful sampler to work on. It definitely does have a lot of meaning for me and I, I think she would have liked it. So, all right, next up is Autumn Hawker and Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. So this one has been my uh, Wednesday autumn stitch, so like my Wednesday, Thursday autumn stitch. Um, if you followed my progress last year, on the Wednesday, on every Wednesday, Yvette and I would work on an autumn piece until we had finished, and then we would work on another one and another one. And we decided at the end of last year to, because um, she knew I had an autumn at Hawker and Hollow, and then she has Village? I think it's Village. Yes, it must be Village. Um, at Hawker and Hollow that she had started a while back and we were kind of in the same spot as far as blocks go. And so we decided to work on our Hawker and Hollows for a little while on our Wednesdays and Thursdays. So this is my progress so far. I think the last time I did my video, I was working, I had this bottom portion of this block done and I still had the upper branches and the apples to finish. So I was able to finish that block last week and then I started on the next block. And last night I was able to get the pig outlined and I started filling him in and tonight I will continue working on him. But I really, really love working on this piece. I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count vintage country mocha with the DMC that is listed in the chart. And I really, really love working on this one. It might be kind of hard to set it aside when the time comes to work on another autumn piece because I really am enjoying my time spent in Hawker and Hollow. If it was up to me and I could move anywhere, this is where I would move. <laughs> if it was a real town, I would totally move to Hawk Run Hollow. So it's so much fun. I absolutely love it. Love it, love it. And I'm going to enjoy getting back. Uh, so I'll work on it tonight and then I will look forward to getting back to it next Wednesday. But on Friday, I will start back on The Winter is Past by Blackbird Design. So I started this in January and this was my progress. I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count oaken with the 36 count oaken by Pictureless Plus with the called for threads one over two. 
And this is the first time I have stitched on this particular color of linen, and I really, really like it. I really like the, the modeling and the color. It's just really beautiful. And I also really love the combination of the different colors of blues and grays and greens. It's just such a beautiful little sampler. I already have a frame that I had found at the Goodwill months before I started stitching it. And I hope it's gonna fit, it should, but it's perfect. And I really do hope it is going to fit it. So I will continue working on that. I hope to get um, all of the alphabet finished and more of the border. I think the border for me, that flower border, I just really love it. It is just so pretty. And I know that there are a lot of samplers that have different types of, you know, flowers in their border. But for me, that's the first time I've ever stitched flowers in a border. And I just really, really love them. I think they're just beautiful. So changes to the rotation. Uh, when I finish samplings, number one, um, my morning stitch that I've been working on, I was thinking about what I wanted to stitch after it was done. And more and more, I kept thinking about this one. So this is the Mary Bell Sampler by Lori Rippey of Homespun Prims by Lori. And I also started this one last month. And I was just gonna have it come into my regular rotation a little bit later in February, but I've actually decided to go ahead and work on this as my morning stitch as soon as um, samplings number one is done. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count corn silk by Weeks Dye Works uh, with the, um, it, it calls for anchor and DMC and the anchor has a DMC conversion. So I'm stitching the DMC conversion and then the called for DMC, one over two. And I think that this might be as far down as the border goes and then it goes straight across. So it's just a little a sampler. So I plan on working on that next week in the morning as my morning stitch and then hope to get some more progress on it. I know it'll be a little bit more slow going, but um, that's something that I would like to get finished. Uh, the reason why I decided to move uh, my Mary Bell sampler to my morning stitch is if you follow me for any length of time, you know that when it comes to my mocking basket of whips, the goal is to not put anything in it Everything that I'm working on in my current rotation, I have to work on until I'm finished. And anything that comes out of the mocking basket has to be, you know, worked on actively. The goal is to eliminate my whips so that I'm only working on current projects all the time. So I have several projects that have just sort of been languishing in the mocking basket of whips that need to be worked on. And this particular one is one that has been haunting me for quite a while. I originally thought I was gonna be able to work on it in the autumn, but then I decided to be a monogamous stitcher and never really got the chance to work on it. And then I thought at some point this year, I would pick it up and start working on it. Well, then um, there is several stitchers on Instagram that have started working on it. And whenever I go on there, it seems like I'm always guaranteed to see one of them posting their progress. So every time I see it, it just makes me want to stitch it more and more and more. So I had sat down at the beginning of the week and I had got to thinking about my rotation and what I wanted to be working on and how I could bring it into my rotation without having more projects than what I could possibly finish, <laughs> if that makes sense. Basically, I didn't wanna add any more to my rotation because then I, I would never see progress on anything. I would just have all these things rotating in and out. So what I decided to do is to move Mary Bell into my morning stitch. And that way, by doing that, I could work on Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. <laughs> so this one has really been calling to me very loudly. I just really have been wanting to work on it. 
It doesn't help that I'm working on Autumn on Lazy Bear or um, Autumn at Hawkburn Hollow, which, you know, the even though um, this is by Kathy Barrick, Kathy Barrick and her sister have carriage house samplings. And so I feel like a lot of the the Hawkburn Hollow, I, I just like feel they're not similar, but yet they are like the colors I think are similar. And maybe some of the how, you know what I mean? It, they're just... I'm probably not making any sense, but by working on that, it also has just really made me strongly want to work on this one again. And so I finally decided the time has come. I need to find a way to put it into my rotation so that that way I can be working on it too. <laughs> so when I last stopped, this was how much I had gotten done. And here's the whole fabric. I don't want you guys to think that this is the all you need. No, I just have it folded. Uh, but this is where I ended up. And I did not pull the threads, but it's all... Um, Jen Lee from Quirks and Stitches did a conversion. And I, she kindly shared the conversion with me. And so I, that's what I'm stitching it with. And the next time... I show this in my next video, I will bring the threads with me. So this is where I left off. And even this little bit right here, I think is just so absolutely gorgeous. So I am looking forward to working on this one again. Uh, so how my rotation will go is I will work on the Winter's Past, Autumn and Hawkburn Hollow, and then this one. So in my next video, I will have progress on those three to show you as well as progress on the Mary Bell sampler. Okay, so before I forget, I'm stitching this on a piece of vintage country mocha with Jen Lee Quirks and Stitches thread conversion, which she showed so generously shared with me. I'm stitching it one over two, and I cannot remember if it is a 40 count or a 36 count. I think it's 36 but I don't have my glasses on, so I can't tell. <laughs> and there was nothing in the project bag. So if there was like a little piece of paper or something that had that information on, I must have misplaced it. So I will put the correct information down below. And I started stitching this with Christy of Crosshatch Quilts. And I, for whatever reason, originally thought we had started it in the spring of 2021, but I actually think it was in 2020. So it's been sitting languishing for quite a while. And I have been wanting to pick it up and stitch it for quite a while. Um, the goal for this is to finish it by October or at least September. Uh, because in October, I'm going to be starting a rather large project. And I would like to have this one done so that it's not still in my rotation when I start that project. So um, my plans will be to work on that. Uh, it will be next week. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to getting back to it. It's such a beautiful... Uh, sampler. I love all of the elements of it and I don't know why I've just allowed it to languish because I've really been wanting to get back to stitch it and to finish it and every time I see somebody post about theirs on Instagram I just want to stop everything I'm doing and go pull it out and start stitching it. So at least this way now I will be able to and I will be able to hopefully get it out of the whip basket for good. <laughs> Over the past two weeks, I did have a finish and that is the 1823 EW Alphabet Sampler by Country Rustic Primitives. So I think on my last video, I was almost done. I just had a little ways left to go and I did finish it and here it is. So I stitched it on a piece of 32 count days gone by with the called for DMC one over two. The frame is one that I got at the Goodwill. I painted it black and then I mounted the stitching onto a piece of mat board with three pieces of batting and then I laced it. And the initials are M and S and they are for my six times great-grandmother, Mary Snyder. 
and she was actually born before 1823 but I decided I liked the I didn't basically I didn't want to have to go find an uh, I didn't want to have to go find numbers to like put her date of birth but she was born somewhere between 1820 and 1824 so I just decided to leave the 1823 and one change I did was the blue bird was actually supposed to be gray, but I liked it. Um, I, I don't know, I just kind of wanted there to be a little bit more blue. So some of the letters are not the correct color. Um, I kind of move things around a little bit, but it's all in the called for DMC. I just kind of put them in different places. So I really like how it turned out. Um, this was actually supposed to go in my bedroom. I made a, um, a quilt hanger um, because when I began searching for one online, if the price of the hanger was a good deal, the shipping was like really expensive. And when I really got to looking at it, I got to thinking that it doesn't look too complicated. And so I actually kind of got different pieces and I put them together and I made my own quilt rack and it turned out really, really good. And when I do get my bedroom finished, I will do a bedroom tour and I will show you that. But um, originally this was gonna go sit on the shelf it created and I decided to put it up a little bit higher and because of that, there's not enough room for the frame to be on the shelf. So um, I'm actually going to take this, um, this back off and I will put um, just a plain backing and then I'll put a little hanger right there and then hang it on the wall. Speaking of things hanging on my wall, so I, um, if you guys followed my journey last year, you know I was working on Anne Priest and I did finish it um, in January, like in like the first week of January. Uh, and that one was stitched because it was going to go into my bedroom and I ended up ordering the wood for the frame and it will be here tomorrow, I think. That's what the tracking says. So I'm hoping that in my next video, I will be able to show you a finished and priest. So fingers crossed. <laughs> in my last video, I did have a giveaway and thank you so much to everybody who entered. I really enjoyed reading through all of your guys' comments and I know I've said this a lot, but I love that you guys get into the spirit of the questions because some of them might, they're not off the wall, but it's not ones that you would think, you know, somebody who's showing cross stitching and quilting would, um, would ask. So I did pull the winners. And so what you'll need to do is you will need to con, con you will need to contact me via email and I will put that information down in the description box on how you can get a hold of me if you are one of the winners. So without further ado, the first prize was the Coming to America kit and the winner is Carm S. So that's C-A-R-M-S and this is your YouTube name. Number two is for the Queen of the Needle chart and that is Donna 615. So again, that's your YouTube name. Number three is Strawberry Fields Forever. And the winner is Diane Fabek. Uh, it is F-A-B-E-C. Number three was for Oh Joyous Day. And the winner is Susan Alba. A-L-B-A-U-G-H. And number five is Betty Ross. So Congratulations to the winners. Again, if you can email me, and I will put my email information down below in the description box. If you can email me your address, I will get those out in the mail to you soon. And thank you so much for playing. This video also has a giveaway, and all of these charts were so very generously donated by Alice, so thank you so much, Alice. There are five charts, and I have numbered them one through five. So whichever ones that you are interested in winning, you will need to put that information down below in your comment. So you will need to put, if you're interested in one, two, three, four, five, you need to make sure you're saying one, two, three, four, five, or you're just putting the numbers you're interested in winning. Because when I go right before I film my next video, I will pull all of the comments and I will search for the number. And that's how I award the winner. So you definitely wanna make sure you are putting those numbers in your comment. So without further ado, 
Number one is Patchwork Pumpkin by Blackbird Designs. So if you're interested in this, it is number one. Number two, Blessed Bee by Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. Number three is Mary Noel by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. Number four, Plum Street Samplers, Liberty's Welcome. And I can tell you right now, this one was a lot of fun to stitch. And number five is also by Plum Street Samplers. It is Hello Summer. So if you are interested in any of those, you want to make sure that you put that down below and answer the question, which is, and I had to think about this one, how I wanted to say it. So um, lately, I have been watching a lot of older shows, ones that I watched when I was younger, a lot of British comedies, um, but I have been watching a lot of them while I sew. And I got to thinking, you know, what show would I, you know, wish was on now? you know, with the same characters, same everything, just on now. So I thought maybe that'd be a great giveaway question. So if you could choose any show that you watched at any point in your life, and you would like to see it come back again on primetime TV, what show would it be? Now it's not gonna be remade, so it'll be the original show will come back onto primetime and you will watch it just like you watched it back then by season, however it is that they broadcast it. Which show would that be and why? So I thought about this because there's a lot of shows. Um, Mr. Bean was one that I think I would love to see again. I always got a huge kick out of watching that every Friday night on OPB. Uh, another show was Keeping Up Appearances. It was one of my favorite, favorite shows. But I think the one that I would love to see come back with the original character, just the original shows, would be The Vicar of Dibley. That is one of my favorite, favorite shows. And I was able to binge watch it over the past two weeks. But I absolutely love that show. And I think a lot of people would like it, you know, if they could see it again, I think it would get a whole new audience. But anyway, the Vicar of Dibley is my, or Dibley, the Vicar of Dibley is my pick. So what is a show that you would like to see come back um, and put that down below? And of course you must be a subscriber, like the video, and in my next video, I will announce winners. And thank you so much for playing. I appreciate it so very much. All right guys, well, that is all of the cross stitching that I have to show and share in this video. Uh, my plans going forward are to work on um, The Winter is Past, um, Autumn at Hawkburn Hollow, uh, then Autumn on Lazy River Mountain, The Mary Bell Sampler, and to finish samplings number one. Uh, so I will have the progress on all of those to show you in my next video. And of course, I'll be back in two weeks, but now I'm going to start talking about quilting. So if that's not something that you're not interested in seeing, this is a really great stopping off point. And of course, I will be back in two weeks and I hope you have a great two weeks and thank you so much for stopping by today. <laughs> All right, let's talk about quilts. So a big thank you to everybody who commented on the Red Sampler quilt, which is behind me now. Uh, I have really enjoyed having it up on the wall over the past two weeks because, um, you know, I, I remember assembling it, but for a lot of the time it's hung out underneath my quilt table waiting to get quilted. And so I hadn't really necessarily seen it. I mean, I'd been working on, you know, I quilted it of course, and then there was the binding and then the stitching of the binding. But to have it up on the wall, I've really been able to look at all of the various blocks and it's just such a fun quilt. I'm so glad that I participated in the stitch along that was hosted by Lori Holt. It was just a lot of fun and I'm really, really glad that I did because I almost didn't. I, I almost talked myself out of it, but I'm glad that I did. So I just, it's been a lot of, you know, like eye candy, I guess. I just, you know, you walk into a room and you just sort of like see a block and you thought, oh, I remember making that block and it just sort of like pops right out at you and it's just, it's a lot of fun. I really love sampler quilts, so I'm, I'm really, really, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Um, I did make it with all Civil War reproduction fabrics and it was a lot of fun. Now over the past couple of weeks, uh, I did get my sewing machine back. In my last video, I hadn't got it back yet 
and I ended up calling on Tuesday to find out what was going on. And they told me that the technician that had been assigned my sewing machine had been out for a week sick with COVID, but he was, he had come back and my sewing machine was one of the ones that he was going to be working on that day. And about 45 minutes later, the technician calls me. I'm thinking my machine's done. And instead he's calling to tell me that my motor in my sewing machine was going out. Luckily, my sewing machine was still under warranty, so I didn't have to pay for a new motor, but it definitely bummed me out a little bit. And I told Brian, I didn't realize I was so hard on all of my machines because early in, earlier in the year, my quilt machine had got a new motor as well. So I was kind of bummed. And I, you know, I told Brian, I said, I didn't realize that I was so hard on my machines. I always thought I took really good care of them. And he said, you have to look at it this way. You sew on your machines all day, every day. So they're bound to, the motors are bound to wear out. And when he said it like that, I did realize that that is very true. I do do quite a bit more sewing than probably, you know, my machine is used to. <laughs> so it got a new motor. Uh, it was done Wednesday morning. I went and I picked it up, brought it home. And of course I have been sewing ever since. <laughs> I'm just so glad to have it back. It took me, you know, I sat down with it. It had been gone for four weeks and I sat down with it and I, I was looking at it and I thought, oh my gosh, I have no idea how to sew with this thing. What the heck? <laughs> but within like a half hour, we were old friends again. So I'm really, really glad to have it back. And the more I got sewing, the more I realized that the motor had probably been going out for a while because he said it was a squeaking sound. And I guess that the particular sound it was making to him, he immediately like, okay, there's something wrong with the motor. And then he tested it and he's like, the motor's definitely going out. So I realized it had been squeaking for probably a year and a half, probably. So that's definitely something that going forward, I definitely, when I hear that again, it's like, okay, I better get it up there. Um, another thing the husband told me is that I probably should take it up at least every year, year and a half to have it clean because I do use it quite a bit. <laughs> so that is something that I will have to make, you know, make sure that I do going forward. Another thing is, is between now and then I do need to find a reliable backup machine, one that can do everything my sewing machine can do. So that, that way I'm not out of commission for the four weeks it'll take to get it cleaned or even longer, depending on the time of year. So that's something that I definitely need to maybe save up and think about. So before I show you what I have been sewing over the past two weeks, I did receive a package from the Fat Quarter Shop and inside was a new pattern that is available now on the Fat Quarter Shop's website. And I will put a link to their website down below. And the pattern is called Evening Primrose and it's designed by Crystal Stahl of It's So Emma. And this is what it looks like. And when I first saw it, it kind of reminded me of a bear paw quilt. And that's one of the types of quilts that I've kind of always wanted to make. I have a couple of different patterns, but this one, even though it isn't a bear paw quilt, it just sort of like made me think of that. And I've been kind of looking at this one off and on since it arrived and I kind of want to make it. I'm definitely in Civil War reproduction fabrics, but I think it would be a very pretty quilt and I might start, um, Maybe when I go to my local quilt shop, I might get some uh, fabric for it. So this particular pattern is available at the Fat Quarter Shop if you are interested. But over the past, um, I guess it would be a week and a half, I worked on my Dear Jane blocks. Um, in my last video, I showed you the one block I had made, which I did not like it at all. I did remake it. Um, Yvette split it up because I'm stitching it with Yvette, Christy of Crosshatch Quilts, and Carol Saltbox Stitcher. Um, Yvette split up the blocks and so she assigned me the, there was the four blocks for January and then the four blocks for February. I kind of mixed them all up so I have one block left for January and then the rest are for February. So this particular block here is for February. So I was able to get this one done. It was super, super easy. I did do the paper piecing. I just need to pull the paper off of them. And then this particular block was the one I remade and I should have brought the, the original block, 
because there is definitely a huge difference. And I put the two of them together and I showed Brian and he definitely was like, this one looks way better. So this is the very first Dear Jane block. Then there is this one. This one was also part of the January blocks that Yvette assigned me. I love this one so much. And then this one is one of the corner triangles. And this one was a doozy to put together. Even though it looks really easy, it was a doozy. And I also, so all of these have been paper pieced. So I have four of the blocks done. And going forward, I have four more to do. So I have the applique block that's left over from January and then all of February's. And I plan on working on those over the next two weeks because I would like to have all of the February and January January's blocks done in time for March. All right, so when I got my sewing machine home, I wanted to find something that I could work on that I could just basically chain sew. That way I could just sew with my sewing machine. And several months back, two of my friends sent me uh, these amazing uh, pinwheel blocks. And it was, the pinwheels weren't put together, but the two halves were. And so basically the whole block wasn't put together, but the two, the two pieces that make up the block were all put together. So basically all I have to do is go in and put them together. And then I think I have to make a couple of blocks. Um, both of them had started this quilt a while ago. They had started it for themselves and then both decided that they didn't want, they didn't want to do them. So then they sent both of, both of them sent their blocks to me. So I will have one full quilt. <laughs> And that is the pinwheel quilt. So I don't have any links. I did try to go look for it online and I was able to find somebody who had finished it, but not any information about where the pattern came from or anything like that. But the quilt is called the pinwheel quilt. And this is what it looks like. And this is what I got done. And I would stand up, but um, that wouldn't work out very well. <laughs> so, uh, this is what I got done. So I basically got the top section um, assembled. I guess it's not the, it's like the top of the quilt. So right here, this is the top of the quilt. So I have the first couple of rows done and it's one of those ones where you have to, um, you have to lay it out. So you have to have what you've sewn together and then you have to have the next row of blocks and then the next row after that. And then you have to like sew them together that way. So it's not a regular quilt where you can just grab the blocks and sew them all together. You have to lay it out and you kind of have to plan it a little bit. So I'm hoping to get this one finished um, and have it finished to show you in the next video. Then I return to the Temecula album quilt. So I had uh, all the way up to, uh, I think month seven, let me double check. Yes, so I had all the way up to month seven completed, and then I had to do month eight. So these were the blocks that were for the eighth month. And I was able to get them finished. I worked on them in the evenings um, over the past couple of evenings. And then this morning, I just had one more to make, and I was able to finish that this morning. And here is the first block. Here is the second block. And the third block, which is a bear paw. <laughs> and then there was these two. So I have the eighth month finished and I will start working on the ninth month. And I'm going to try to, I would like to see all of the blocks finished before the end of March. And then that way I can begin assembling it because I think it's going to be um, the perfect quilt to hang in like late summer. So I am looking forward to getting back to those and, get, and working on them. And then my plan after it is done is to start my Civil War tribute quilt. And I cannot wait to start working on that one. And so you will watch the progress on that one as we go through the rest of the year. <laughs>
Well guys, as far as all the quilting goes, that is all I have to show and share in this video as well. Plans will be, of course, to continue working on the Temecula album quilt, the Dear Jane quilt, as well as the Pinwheel quilt. I did get the batting for my Jane Austen quilt, so I'm hoping over the next two weeks to get her quilted. And then the little, um, the mini Monday, the mini Monday sewing bee quilt that I showed, I don't remember if I showed it in my last video or if it was the video before, but the backing fabric arrived in the mailbox today. So it's just out, out yonder in the mailbox. And so I'm hoping also to get that one quilted in the next two weeks as well. So I have, I hope both of those, I hope I will have both of those to show you next time. Otherwise, um, I will be back as usual in two weeks. So I hope you have a great one. If you would like to see what I'm up to in between my videos, you can follow me on Instagram. I am Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, or I have a Facebook page called Pumpkin Hollow Quiltings, and I will put Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. I don't know why I always say quiltings. Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. <laughs> and I will put a link to both of those down below. If you're new here, I hope you will hit the subscribe button to come back and see what I'm working on every two weeks. Otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful couple of weeks and I will see you all again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>